Next up, uh, we have an introduction to what, what we call the AOIs, which are kind of our minimal scan units that we've been um, um, uh, promoting. And then also um, we have uh, an, in, an introduction to our regional coordinators and the regional sessions that um, are, are about to start here at the um, top of the hour. So if I could have um, Grace and Steve on just so we can introduce them very quickly and then. So of course we have Steve Lees who's a co-director um, of the Earth Archive and um, probably the person responsible for all of this. This is the, the um, uh, my colleague who uh, I walked down the hall to one day and when was that 2009? Maybe uh, 2010, Chris. 2010, yeah, it's been a long, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I'm old now, so I don't remember these things. Walked down the hallway and um, said, dude, there's gotta be a better way. And that's how we started. We got started on this uh, LIDAR journey. And then uh, Grace Ellis, who's involved with the Earth Archive and a doctoral student at um, Colorado uh, State University. I don't know if you wanna say hi, Grace. Hello. Thanks for having me. So we're going to introduce the AOI concept. Am I going to run the PowerPoint, Steve? Chris, you run the PowerPoint because I got to jump off to go to track two in a bit. And I will just tell you when to turn the slides. Sounds great. You could put it in presenter mode. Go back to the very first page. So a common issue when collecting remotely sensed data is that people who live in the area where the scans are done are often not considered as the data is being collected. This can lead to the disempowerment of these people as data about their environment is collected and used or misused by others. The Earth Archive, as we put it into motion, wants to avoid this problem. We aim to involve the local people in the collection of any data that's done. So in order to explain our philosophy with regards to the collection of very high resolution LIDAR data like we've been talking about and how we want to include local people in groups from the national level on down to the very local level, the first thing we'll do in this presentation is overview our mission and go through the protocols we're putting in place to involve groups and individuals from the national to the local, then overview very briefly what we mean by open access data. And I think Chris alluded this, to this in his um, introduction to this whole session, this whole day and how it's not, open access has varying meanings. How we integrate capacity building into our work in ways that this data will be able to be used by the local people. So first of all, what's an AOI? And first of all, let's go back to the goal of the Earth Archive, which is, so go to the next slide, Chris. So <clears throat> to paraphrase our goal is to facilitate the lighter scanning of all land areas and facilitate the open access sharing of this data. <clears throat> to encourage LIDAR scanning of areas by others and the sharing of this data as an open access resource. For areas that may not be scanned by others, as Chris has pointed out, the places which are under scanned, the Earth Archive's goal is to scan those areas. We recognize it's not possible to scan the whole world at one time or even the whole Amazon at one time. So we have to prioritize what can be done. So how do we prioritize these? Next slide. <clears throat> First of all, what we've done is we've um, invited people within the countries who work in those countries who are from those countries to join us as coordinators of the Earth Archive inside of the country. We're working with them to identify in-country collaborators. Potential collaborators can be governmental offices, NGOs, people in academia who work in these areas, indigenous groups, local groups. And then in collaboration with those people, we want to decide what are the priority areas as they view them for scanning. There's a basic criteria which we're working on and this will be a little bit different by each country least likely areas for other people to scan. The critical areas to preserve cultural and ecological heritage and the areas that are most endangered. So let's go to the next slide, Chris. <clears throat> so <clears throat> examples of initial AOIs could thus be areas that are 
critical to be scanned. They're not being scanned yet. They have very important cultural heritage, which we think might be there or people think might be there. There's ecological knowledge that could be lost. And for the Amazon basin, which is a very big area and we can't scan it all at once, we've been identifying these type of areas. We go to the next slide, you'll see a, the regional coordinators who've been helping us to identify these areas. And I'm gonna let Chris pick it up from here and go on and show some maps of the draft AOIs. Yeah, so first of all, I really wanna, I, you know, I, I did this this morning and I really wanna do it again. Thank these regional coordinators who have gone a, a, above and beyond uh, really what they needed to do to um, both start to build the infrastructure to do, you know, to create these scans in each of the nine countries that encompass the Amazon. As you can imagine, this is a complex political, logistical, now we have COVID um, puzzle that encompasses many, many different elements, not the least of which is interacting with, getting permissions with, building capacity for uh, stakeholders, indigenous groups, and other local people who have not previously had access to very high resolution uh, data like we, we are providing. So in many instances, what we're able to do is level the playing field and give these people ammunition to help in disputing uh, land, in, to help with land tenure disputes, to help um, identify and stop deforestation, uh, et cetera. It can also help provide the data for uh, to build resilient and sustainable infrastructure in these areas. So it's useful at, at a many different, for many different reasons at many different scales. As Jason Stoker said earlier, it's like the Swiss army knife of data. We're not even sure how it, how it could be used yet. And so these regional coordinators have been instrumental in building that infrastructure to, uh, to undertake these scans. They have also gone above and beyond what we asked them to do in terms of creating these regional sessions. And these regional sessions are composed of top scholars, in some instances, folks from NGOs, government, governmental officials who recognize the value of the Earth Archive, recognize the value of these scans want to promote these scans um, and at the same time help build resilient and sustainable adaptations for their for their country um, this is what what is going to be presented in these regional sessions is critical in very important academic research and there was such interest in this Congress, and there was such interested interest from people who wanted to speak and participate that we have actually run out of time for these uh, regional sessions. And so they are absolutely jam-packed. And again, I want to encourage the, the speakers in these sessions to go to the speaker lounges if they can do that and answer questions. And I wanna encourage people that wanna interact or ask questions with these folks, or perhaps become part of this Earth, Earth Archive ecosystem that we're building to go to those lounges and interact with those people and um, ask questions and learn more, and learn more about um, this, this amazing uh, Earth Archive project. So with that piece of it done, we have a, just a couple other slides here that have some maps of some initial areas or initial AOIs that we have identified throughout the Amazon. This is, these constitute our first phase of scanning. 
Obviously, we're not going to be able to scan the entire Amazon at once. Obviously, we're not going to do it in a single season. Uh, and obviously, as we just learned from the last session that I, I happen to moderate, there are many different kinds of scanners and many different tools that we can use to assemble this Earth Archive scan um, of the Amazon. And not every scanner, not every methodology is going to work for, for every instance. And we need to start to think about and build scalable solutions. And that's what we're doing. So these, for these AOIs, we have identified areas that are threatened, that we know contain critical cultural and ecological resources, and where we can logistically uh, go to these places and, um, uh, and go to these places and uh, and perform meaningful meaningful scans. So we have several in Ecuador, several in Brazil, several in Colombia, several in Bolivia. We're working on identifying five to six of these AOIs in each of the countries that we're interested in. Each AOI that we're focusing on is about 300 square kilometers in area. That is kind of our minimal area that we feel logistically, financially, et cetera, um, that, we can, that we can scan that, that, makes, uh, that makes sense to us. Each area, each one of those scans, we estimate will cost around $60,000. Using current methodologies and using the current way that we're thinking about these scans. However, I will say that we are considering new techniques, new methodologies, and new scanners that may bring those costs down and allow us to scan larger areas. Our mission with the Earth Archive is to scan these areas and present the data as lost files, minimally processed. And we hope to, for these initial scans, go the next mile and produce DEMs and some other useful products um, from them. And I think that's where I wanna leave it. Steve or Grace, do you have anything to add? Yes, I think the only thing I would add, Chris, is that to emphasize the scalability of it, this would be the first initial emphasis on it. Then we'd move to other areas that are identified by the groups and country as being the next ones to do. And we keep building in that way. I want, I'd like to emphasize the collaborativity of these and the involvement of the in-country groups that are working with us. So that it's, a, it's built over time. And I forget what exactly the number of years that you like to put out there is completing this. That's the goal. But recognizing that given realities of logistics, it could take longer. And now I think I need to go over track two because we have another session starting. <laughs> so let me just introduce that as well. So track one is the track that we're in now. This is going to be um, uh, Brazil, Venezuela, uh, Guyana, Suriname, and, and French Guyana. And then um, that will move into LIDAR technical challenges. Uh, track two is Ecuador. And then that will move into uh, discussion of uh, data dissemination and storage. And then track three is Bolivia, Peru, and Colombia. Remember, all of these are going to be recorded so you can watch them um, uh, later. And um, also remember that you can move between, <laughs> you can move, you have the ability to move between tracks as you, as you need to. Also, please remember to visit the sponsor lounges and the speaker lounges, et cetera. Um, and also remember, of course, that uh, the Earth Archive runs on donations, and we would love to have your um, donation. We are a nonprofit, and you can there's a there's a lounge to actually facilitate um, your uh, your donation. 